Okay, one, so now we're going to find the binding energy here. We're going to find this binding energy, and the information that we're given is we're given these atomic masses. So we were given these atomic mass numbers. And we'll go through this together. The question is to find the binding energy of a helium nucleus. Now, there's another way to write this equation. Instead of saying that we're using two protons, so this stands for hydrogen, right? Uh, how many protons does this hydrogen nucleus have? One. One. And how many neutrons? Zero. Yeah. Right, because this is not the neutron number, it's the mass number. If the mass is the same as the number of protons, there can't be any neutrons. That means that a normal hydrogen isotope is really just a proton. This is really just a proton. So this is approximately the same as a proton. We can use these symbols somewhat interchangeably to indicate a proton. Now, there's other isotopes of hydrogen. You might have heard of deuterium. Mm -hmm. This is deuterium. Well, deuterium does have a neutron. So deuterium is not just a proton, but normal isotope of hydrogen is a proton. So now we can write this equation as like this. Uh, two hydrogen nucleuses plus two neutrons equals two heliums. Now remember what our, uh, and we know that's going to be plus the binding energy. So we have to figure out what our mass defect is going to be. Then we can use this equation. By the way, in this equation, you've got to use SI units. What are the SI units for energy? Just joules. The only SI unit that has a kilo in it is kilograms. Otherwise, no kilos. Um, so this would have to be in joules. So if we had kilojoules, we'd have to get rid of that and turn it into joules. What would be the SI units for the mass defect? It's kilograms. Yeah, I would just say in kilograms. That's right. Not AMUs. So if you've got AMUs, you've got to change those into kilograms. All right, how would we find this number? Uh, do you know you guys have well, this? It's speed, so it's meters per second squared. Well, in that case. Meters squared per second squared, yeah. What, n what number would this be? Yeah, so that's in your uh, back cover if you have to look it up. What does C stand for? It's the speed of light, right? Uh, Einstein discovered that nothing can go faster than the speed of light in a vacuum. So that's what this number is. By the way, is this a big number or a small number? So if you put in, uh, if you completely destroy a mountain mass, will that give you a lot of energy or just a little? Oh, wait, no, a lot. Tons. Yeah. Even if the mass is small, right. you're multiplying it by 10 to the 8 squared, yeah. which is 10 to the 16. All right, this is why nuclear bombs work in the way they do. You only have to um, have a small amount of mass disappearing to get a huge amount of energy. Uh, and this is the basic principle behind nuclear power plants as well. There was probably some problems in the homework that tried to convince you that um, you can run a nuclear power plant on a small amount of mass when it would take tons and tons of coal to get the same amount of energy, because that's using a chemical reaction and not a nuclear reaction. So because this is a big number, nuclear reactions can give tons of energy. Okay, so um, we might have to do some unit conversions as we're working through this, because the numbers we were given were in AMUs. But we'll, I think we'll put that off for the time being. All right, now what we have to do is add up the masses of these and compare it to the mass of this. Now, there is uh, something that's a little bit difficult here. What we want to do is add the masses of the nucleuses. We don't want to include the electrons, because this is a nuclear reaction, not an entire atomic reaction. However, notice that these were labeled as atomic masses. These are labeled as atomic masses, which means that they include the electrons. For example, this includes the mass of two electrons. Let's, um, and this includes the mass of one electron, because that would be what it would have if it was neutral. One electron and two electrons. Um, you have your uh, textbook. Look at the back cover. What does the back cover say is the mass of a proton? Two times 
seven kilograms. Let's do that in AMUs, sorry. Oh, it's 1.00728 AMU. Why is that a different number than this? Well, remember this includes the electron. And this is just the bare proton. So it makes sense that this is bigger. And that's only barely bigger, right? But it's a little bit bigger because it includes the mass of that extra electron. So this is a technicality that we have to worry about when we're doing these problems. If they give you a mass of a proton, that doesn't include the electron. But if they label things as atomic masses, well, atoms include electrons. Do you see why I say this has one electron and this has two electrons? Because the, And now we're assuming the, the atomic mass refers to a neutral atom. OK, so technically, Technically, what we should do is we should subtract the mass of one electron from this number to find the nuclear mass. And how many electrons do we have to subtract from this? Uh, two. Of two. Yeah. To get the real nuclear mass. How would you find the mass of an electron? Well, that's also in your back cover. That's 5.4858 5, times 10 to the negative 4 AMUs. So they also have the mass of an electron. So technically, it seems like we have to subtract the masses of the electrons from the atomic masses. But we're going to see now that there's a trick. Um, so how many electrons are on the left-hand side of this equation? So when we use this symbol, we're talking about the atom of hydrogen. And when we use this symbol, we're just talking about protons. Well, here we have two hydrogens. So how many electrons are there total on this left-hand side? Two. Yeah, two electrons. And how many electrons total on the right-hand side? because there's still two, which means we don't need to subtract out the masses because those would just cancel anyway. We would just add up subtracting two masses of the electrons from here and two masses of the electrons from here, but that would just be a waste of time and make us more likely to make mistakes. So the rule is, even though technically we should be using nuclear masses and not atomic masses, everything will work out if you use all atomic masses. And here we were given atomic masses, so how, that's how the problem is designed. So this is the reason these problems are hard. Is Keep working with the units here. Uh, okay, so you, uh, you can work, as long as you're working with all atomic units, you don't need to subtract the electrons because you would just subtract the same number of electrons from both sides anyway, and it wouldn't affect the change in the mass. So uh, the other option is to use all nuclear masses, so either all atomic or all nuclear. Well, in this case, we can use all atomic. The only thing that we don't have to use an atomic unit for is neutrons because neutrons never have electrons with them, so we don't need to worry about that. Okay, so we can just use these numbers. All right, so let's go for it. Um, how would we find the mass defect now? Well, we have to find the mass of these protons. So what calculation do we need to do? Based on the information we were given in the problem, what calculation do we have to do to find the total mass of the protons that we started with? Well, so, well the H has one proton, but mm -hmm. there's two of them. That's right. I mean, or two times what? The proton weight or right. AMU. Which is? Would we use the actual pro the one right. point zero zero seven? Yeah. Okay. I, I just want to make sure you guys are seeing what the right calculation is here. So we got to actually write out that calculation and do it. So let's do that. By the way, we cannot round when we're doing these problems, or at least you can't round the atomic masses, because the whole point is we're only losing a very small amount of mass, and we'll lose that. We won't be able to see that if we round off the masses too much. So we're not going to round. And while we're at it, we might as well ask, how are we going to find the total mass of the neutrons? I guess that wasn't, was that given in the problem? No. So we'd have to look that up. Let's see if we can find that number. Yeah, we want it to be an AMUs to be consistent with what we're using. So what calculation do we do to find the neutrons? The same thing? Yeah, multiply by two.
and switch guns. Okay, and how about how do we find the mass on the right hand side? Yeah, there's no calculation because there's only one helium nucleus. So that would be 4.0026 AMUs. 